Boy, we are seeing some real problems. Uh, I, I read an article authored by a bunch of Yahoo experts. They were all the ones that said, oh, inflation's transitory. It's nothing to worry about. Now they're coming out going, okay, it's not. It, I mean, yeah, uh, we were wrong before, but we're right this time. This is the worst it's going to get uh, by the, you know, by the new year. We're going to be rolling. I don't buy that for a second. And here's why. All of the things that are being done right now are going to add to inflation and shortages. Right now, um, there are 16 states. Just at the beginning of the week, what was it? 10? There are now 16 states that are paying $5 a gallon for gasoline. Maine is 502. Massachusetts 502. Idaho uh, just over five. New Jersey over five. Pennsylvania, uh, Ohio over five. Arizona 518. Michigan 521. Indiana 523. Alaska 546. Illinois. Can I ask you? Is there a reason Michigan you're paying 521 when Alaska is paying 546? Illinois 553. Washington State 548. Oregon 548. Hawaii. Hawaii is playing is paying 549 and Nevada is paying 556 a gallon. And then California coming in at number 1 at $6.39 a gallon. Now what is causing this? By the way, several other states are on the verge, Utah Gas is four ninety eight, Vermont four ninety nine. So those will be added. We added, I think, twenty six cents this week. Twenty six cents in the last seven days. And it's not gonna stop. Because of ESG, because of everything that this government is doing to stop funding oil research and petroleum companies. Diana, um I want to get her name right, for Furch got Roth. Um, there's a name that clearly you change. Or, you know, if you're marrying into that, you're like, no, nope, I'm not going to do that. Anyway, um, Diana is um, uh, an adjunct professor of economics at George Washington University. She has been the chief economist at the U.S. Department of Labor, chief of staff, the President's Council of Economic Advisors, deputy executive Sec- secretary for domestic policy. Um, uh, she also served under Reagan. Bush and the second Bush. She's kind of an expert. And uh, I really, really want to talk to her about two different kinds of inflation. The inflation that is caused because we printed so much money. And then the inflation that is not going to go away, in my opinion. And that is the inflation on food and gas and things uh, like that because we are moving into a new green economy. And it's going to cost us a fortune, a fortune. By the way, did you ever pay? Did you ever did you vote for that? Because I didn't vote for that. I thought we were voting for someone that would just, you know, take us back to normal and be sane. I don't think we've gotten that. Maybe it's, you know, maybe it's just me. Uh, Diana, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Hi, welcome. It's so it's an honor to have you on the uh, program to answer some, to answer some hillbilly questions from a guy like me. Um, but oh, uh, wow. I uh, I would uh, I'd I'd like to ask you about inflation, but two different kinds of inflation: the inflation that comes from money printing, but then there is there not inflation that is coming because of ESG. And our energy policies, what's happening with the food crisis and everything else. Those are two different reasons uh, we're feeling this price crunch, correct? Uh, That is correct, yes. Yes, but with the Fed monetizing and accommodating these supply pressures, uh, then it means that inflation is higher. So you see that in the EU, for example, they've had the same upward pressures on energy but their inflation rate is lower. Same with Switzerland, for example, because their central banks have behaved in a different way. So why is Germany in so much trouble? I'm seeing Germany, you know, their their inflation is the highest, I think, since 1950 or something like that. Why is Germany different? Right. Do you know? Well, they, 
the uh, Germany is having particular particularly high problems with with its energy prices, and uh, the two the two work together, of course. Uh, they work and together. The, the, so, of course, if you have higher prices, then they do affect. If you have higher prices, then, and, of course, they do affect what the Federal Reserve is doing. So, the, But the Federal Reserve, even if the Federal Reserve could correct all of the mistakes that we've made, it is the, the problem with our gas and energy is that we are hell-bent now with this administration – on destroying all fossil fuels so there's no funding through esg and and so that's not going to go away these these prices are relatively where they're going to be forever i mean they go up but it's not going back down to two dollars a gallon with these with this administration do you agree with that uh yes unless this administration changes its mind then yes things are not going to go down yes yes exactly Okay, yeah. um, so it feels as though the American people are being impoverished. Uh, you know, I don't know where you stand on the Great Reset, but it bothers me when someone says, hey, in eight years you'll own nothing and you'll be happy. Uh, it feels like we're being impoverished, and at the same time, they just came out with, um, you know, a, a, a new safety net uh, for retirees. It, it seems as though the government is starting to just gobble up everything, and starting to provide everything. Do you know much about Secure 2.0? I know that Secure 2.0 is not necessary. The assumption is that low-income workers don't have any way of saving for retirement. But uh, we have IRAs. Uh, You can put $6,000 a year in an IRA. The vast majority of people do not use that amount of tax-deferred savings. And... Uh, you can have it automatically come out of your bank account every month. So there are low, there are there are tax deferred retirement programs for low income people. That is why IRAs got put in. So it's not fair okay. to make employers have the burden of that. On the so then, what are they doing with this new good. retirement with, with this new retirement plan? What what is this? What is their goal? The goal is to require employers to provide 401k or retirement plans for all their workers, which up to now uh, has been optional. What's that going to do to us? What's going to do to businesses? Well, well, it's going to raise the cost of businesses because you have to hire somebody to do it. I mean, say you work in a hardware store and you have a lot of low income workers working as cashiers or helping people find goods in the hardware store. So you might have to provide uh, a 401k plan for these individuals. So you're going to have to call up a benefits manager. You probably don't even have a benefits manager. You probably just give them payroll every month. Now you're faced with setting up a 401k for them. Even for larger, sophisticated firms or consulting firms, often they don't have a 401k or a startup that wouldn't have a 401k. It's difficult to do. So it places an additional burden on small businesses. That is not necessary because if these individual cashiers in the hardware store wanted to put $6,000 in an IRA, they would be able to do that. If they wanted their bank to transfer $500 a month, so it would be auto-enrollment oh into the 401k program, they could do that. So it's just a matter of the federal government getting involved where it isn't really needed. It is. This is incredible. I mean, you worked um, in the Reagan administration. It feels like what we're suggesting, and we're not even close to it on the Fed level, but if the Fed did what the Fed did in, you know, 1980, 1981, uh, and two, and started raising, you know, to 19%, and we had all of this Biden red tape that he's adding you would stop the heart of this nation, would you not? Economically speaking, uh, you really, uh, uh, you really would. You would definitely send the economy into a recession, and you would cause major damage, especially to the low-income workers that President Biden purports to represent. So, uh, as you're looking at things, um, and you know what the situation is now where it's all being done administratively. It's not really even going to go through Congress. He'll just keep doing it, uh, you know, administratively. 
how long can we take this beating before we really start to see everything just go haywire? But it's not, it's not a question of uh, how long. I mean, the longer it goes, uh, the worse people are going to be off. But the wonderful thing about the United States, and I speak as an immigrant from the United Kingdom, is that the pendulum does swing back. And there's an opportunity to do that in November. There's an right. opportunity, and the polls say that the House and Senate are going to be Republican, so that will be an opportunity for oversight hearings. There's going to be an opportunity in 2024. So I think the damage is in the United States is always limited because people have the choice of voting in another party. And when times get bad, they do that. I, I uh, from from your mouth to God's ears, um, uh, I was reading an article today about I think it was in the New York Times, maybe in. Yeah, I think it was New York Times. All of these experts that had said inflation is transitory. Um, and now they're saying, OK, we were wrong about that. However, we're about at the top of the inflation ladder and it's going to start coming down. And 2023 is going to be great. It'll come back down. One of them was actually saying it'll be back down to 1.2 percent inflation rate. Um, who do we listen to? Who <laughs> is there anybody out there that we can trust and what is going to happen with the inflation rate? Best guess. Well, it's certainly going to be uh, above 8%, I would say, certainly through the summer uh, with high energy prices affecting people's use of air conditioners. Some people are saying they're going to be blackouts. High gas prices are going to be pervasive uh, throughout the summer. But the important thing to know is this is a self-inflicted wound. America has the largest oil and natural gas reserves in the world. We could be uh, encouraging fossil fuel production, encouraging pipelines, and we're not doing that. This is a problem that's fixable, and that's the sunny side of this. This is something we can fix with another administration, uh, with another Congress. I, I, uh, I'm so glad to hear your optimism. Um, thank you so much for your service to the nation and, and everything you've done uh, over the years. And I can't imagine what it's like to be an adjunct professor at George Washington University. I hope it's not as bad as it is everywhere else. But uh, oh, any no, university it, it, that it, wants it, to take the name of George Washington down scares me. But No, I have wonderful students. They ask great questions, and I enjoy teaching. Yeah. Good, good. Thank you so much. We'll talk again. God bless you.